欢迎来到 Mandarin Slang Guide (MSG), the Chinese learning podcast that tastes great and probably isn't all that bad for you. I'm Josh Ogden Davis, bringing you some words and perspectives that aren't in your textbook. So welcome back to the second part of our hottest words of the year of the rat, the Shu Nian. Last time we had the journalist Cai Wei, a journalist and podcaster, I should say, and today we have one of the biggest names in the Chinese podcasting industry, even if it's a name you've never heard before.、Uh, he is one of the hosts of the wildly popular podcast Hu Zuo Hu You.、Uh, he is also the founder of Just Pod. And also the project Bo Ke Yi Xia, and one of the organizers of Podfest China, which I have been lucky enough to speak at in a previous year. And his name is Yang Yi. Yang Yi, welcome to the show. Hi, Chashu. Very happy to be joining you on the show and say hello to your audience. <laughs> I'm sure they're all saying hello back. Okay. So I started podcasting in China,、mm-hmm. and then I. Later, started making shows for the non-Chinese market, like MSG. So, I think a lot of our listeners might not really be familiar with the differences, maybe between podcasting in China and podcasting abroad.、Uh, could you speak a little bit about what inspired you to start、hmm. Just Pod and Bo Ke Yi Xia, and <laughs> what are they doing in this Chinese podcast space? Well, I I truly inspired by. The American podcasting、mm-hmm. uh, in early 2010s,、uh, around 2011, I remember 2011 to 2012.、Uh, it is my first time to listen to the feature story、uh, produced by NPR and as well as the This American Life. So this is my first time to listen to the way audio could produce like this because in China the radio in China are always live radio, so which combine. Uh, the radio drama,、uh, the call-in shows, or some talk shows, but we never listen. I never listened to a audio documentaries or storytelling before. So it's it's truly inspired me to think about. Okay, why? why maybe I could do this. Maybe I could do. I we could. Maybe I could introduce this format into Chinese market. Maybe I could produce some. Maybe the Chinese version of this market life or Chinese version of Planet Money. In China, so yeah, so、uh, in 2015, I pr- I produced my first podcast called Radio Yang Yi, not Hu Zuo Hu You. It's called Radio Yang Yi.、Uh, I, I <laughs> but you know I have a full time job, so I didn't have enough time to produce this podcast. So I just yeah, pr- yeah so I just produced、uh, five or six episodes. I will. You know, finale, <laughs> season finale for all. <laughs> <laughs> but、uh, but in early twenty twenty eighteen, one of my friend Roland Chen、uh, called me and say, "Okay,、uh, I remember you produced a podcast before." I say yes, and he asked me,、um, "Would you would you want to produce another one with me?" I say, "Okay, let me try." So at that time, we do co host. A podcast called Hu Zuo Hu You, which means left right, and the name means、um, maybe you have the opinion left <laughs> or right. So we combine a lot、mm. of different opinion in this show. Yeah, so that's how、mm. I begin my podcast career. <laughs> so, what kind of opinions do you try to get on Hu Zuo Hu You?、Uh, is there like a, a 核心 Message like a central message to the show, or is it just whatever you guys feel like talking about? We have a truly have a 核心 a key key word is uh it's called experience,、mm. and in Chinese we call it 经验主义 which means every interviewee on our show you must have a true experience on the subject you talk. You could not just provide an opinion,、mm. but. You could you provide your story and your experience. You actually do something about this topic. You could share your opinion, like maybe you you could research these topics, or maybe you interview somebody about these topics, or you have some truly、uh, experience on this topic.、Mm. So experience is impo- is very important for this show. Yeah, that's one of the guiding principles of MSG as well. I try to get people to talk about the things that they really understand. So I'm once again delighted to have you here. But before we jump into the words, there's one more thing I want to ask you. Partially because 
I just want to know. I'm very curious. There has been a lot of new attention to Chinese language podcasts like Hu Zuo Hu You and Xiao Shang Xuan Hua, which I've talked about before, and Shi Cha, which I tweet about sometimes.、Mm-hmm. Are there any new trends in Chinese podcasting that you predict will be a big deal in 2021? Yes, I think it's already happening.、Oh, no. <laughs> it's happening because、uh, maybe you heard about Xiao Yu Zhou app before, as、uh, which means Little Universe. Yeah, it is the first ever Chinese、uh, podcasting application. So I, I want to stop you there because there are apps that feel like podcasting apps, like Himalaya. Or、uh, Qingting,、hmm. or things like that. There are apps that people use to listen to things like podcasts.、Oh. So, what's the difference between an app like Himalaya and、uh, Xiao Yuzhou? Well, Himalaya is a biggest audio platform, so、uh, it's included a lot of different kind of、uh, audio content, like audio books, pay for knowledge. Uh, some traditional, some live recording of traditional performance or radio drama. Everything、mm. is on. Ah,、uh, Shimalaya.、Mm. So, <laughs> this application is not designed for podcast. So, if a、mm. audience only want to listen to podcast, maybe it's not very convenient for them.、Mm. First, they did not recommend podcast to them.、Uh, Shimalaya recommend audio book for them, or Shimalaya recommend、mm. some pay for knowledge for them, but not podcasting.、Mm. But Uh, Xiao Yu Zhou is different. The Little Universe app is the first podcast app. So, uh, since Xiao Yu Zhou launched, so I think it is trigger in market. In late 2020, there's a lot of application for podcast,、hmm. like uh, Kuai Shou. Uh, yeah, Kuai Shou launched、uh, their podcast app,、huh. and Himalaya. Uh, yeah, Himalaya launched a podcast channel on their. Uh, original podcast, uh, original application, and Li Zhi,、hmm. uh, Li Zhi, yeah, launched a new podcast app. And this month, in recent days, um,、uh, Baidu launched their own podcast app. So there's、hmm. a lot of、uh, podcast app <laughs> right here in China. So yeah, I think it's a signal.、Hmm. This market is booming. I hope this 2021 will have more and more interesting shows. Yeah. Well, speaking of interesting shows. Uh, let's jump into the show. Okay. So all the words from the last show with Chen Saiwei and the words in this show are words that we found on those online lists of the hottest new words of 2020 or the year of the rat, as it were. And the four that we're talking about today are 时间管理大师 <laughs> <laughs> and then we have 海王 and then we have 工具人 and then we have 后浪 Uh, so let's jump into these and take them <laughs> one by one, starting with one that I, I had no idea what this meant、uh, when I saw this.、Uh, it's 时间管理大师 So Yang Yi, can you tell us first what's the literal meaning of this? Okay, so the the literal meaning of the 时间管理大师 which means a master who knows、uh, how to manage his time. Very much. <laughs> yeah, is that right? Yeah, absolutely. So, 时间 is time, and 管理 is management, and 大师 is a master. Master, yeah. So, of course, naturally, when I saw that, I thought, oh, it's like a business term. It's like the new hot business topic. People learning how to manage their time and become more productive. But that's not it at all. What does it really mean this year? <laughs> yeah. So,、uh, there is there is a relative. Relative with some gossip, <laughs> there is a singer.、Uh, he's a pop singer called Luo Zhixiang, and actually, he was、uh, born in Taiwan, and is very famous and popular、mm. both in mainland China and Taiwan. But he has a relationship with different girls at the same time.、Mm. Yeah. So when 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 people、um, you know do some r- research about this this man, and they find okay, this very Hard for them, for him to manage the times because there is a you know different girls at the same time. <laughs> <laughs> There's yeah, it's it's yeah. So so they so they have they use this words called the 时间管理大师 the master of management of time to. I think it is a joke on 
on on him, uh, which means you know, oh, you 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 very know how to manage your times because you could balance <laughs> such you know different girls and at the same time. <laughs> yeah, it's so weird how in that situation where someone's cheating on someone else or cheating on at least one person, they found a positive aspect of that. Yes. To describe the situation, it's like no matter what you do. We're going、mm-hmm. to give a positive name to it. Oh, you're not a cheater. You're a 时间管理大师 You can really manage your time. <laughs> yes. <laughs>、uh, so how how do how do we use this? Can I just say, hey, that guy is a 时间管理大师 I think it could if 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 you um like if you heard some some friends tells you, okay. He he truly have different、uh, like into a different relationship. At the same time, you could say, "Oh,、mm. you truly a 时间管理大师 You could handle this, all of this, and like you could use this outside a relationship, like uh, into a workplace. Like in workplace, like you 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 have、mm. a lot of assignment at the same time. You also could call him. Oh, you truly a 时间管理大师 So it it doesn't only mean. Cheating. You can also still <laughs> use it in the original meaning, but I guess would it feel like a joke? Like if we're coworkers and I saw that you were really busy. Yeah, but I, of course, it's it's of course it's a joke.、Ah. <laughs> it's not a very. It's not the fo- yeah. It's not the formal、uh, gotcha. word to use. It's、oh. a joke. So would I say that like, oh, 你真是个时间管理大师 Yes, you could you could say this. Ah, so 你真是个 you really. Are, uh, 你真是个时间管理大师 Can I break it up? Can I say like, uh, you have great time management. 你时间管理很好哦 <laughs> Like, would that still feel like a joke, or is that too far from the original phrase? I I I think at this at this period at this maybe twenty twenty at twenty twenty one I think everyone knows this joke、mm-hmm. about Luo Zhixiang. So I think it's work. Okay, I I, I should say. We're having some technical difficulties during this recording. We've had to restart the call several times. And、uh, Yang Yi, you've been doing a lot of work aside from speaking on the podcast to help keep this going. So Yang Yi, your time management is really good. Yes, but if you say that, I think okay, you're joking on me. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm not. I'm very happy. <laughs> you're not serious, but it's really joking. <laughs> Excellent.、I'm、very honored to have you here. I wouldn't make fun of you in that way. <laughs> Thank you. All right, so that's 时间管理大师 So let's move on to the next one. The next one is 海王 <laughs> And what does 海王 mean? Okay, I I remember when I was a child in my childhood, 海王 is a god.、Uh-huh. <laughs> you know, is is a god of ocean. <laughs>、uh-huh. Yeah, when when you watch some cartoon or fairy tales, 海王 means The king of ocean. Yeah. But recent years, as、uh, especially in the year of 2020, and people say Hai Wang is you know such different meaning.、Mm. And now Hai Wang means this young man or girl are very. I don't know how to say this in English. It's very have a lot of party,、hmm. have a lot of social, have a lot of relationship. Ooh. Yeah. Why is called Hai Wang? Okay. They have a. There is a deep explanation in this because in Chinese we use a word called "lang."、Oh. <laughs> the meaning of "lang" is wave,、mm. but if this is pronounced, it seems the this one is very good at playing. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Maybe this boy has a lot of dating,、mm. has a lot of girlfriend. They have a lot of party. They are a party guy, or、um, they are very you know have、uh, have a lot of time to spend in in the bar.、Hmm. We we could call this boy is lang. So、uh. where is you know so many waves <laughs> is ocean. <laughs> so we call him is king of ocean. <laughs> is Hai Wang because you are very lang. <laughs> <laughs> very very long. Yeah.、Uh, so, so yeah, this this Hai Wang, the two characters,、uh, Hai being ocean,、uh, and Wang being king. This is actually、um, king. Yeah. yeah. Aquaman is the name they chose for that superhero with the long sexy hair, Aquaman. And so when I heard that Hai Wang meant someone who、uh, has that. 
very rich social life and potentially also has a lot of simultaneous romantic partners. I assumed it was because of the movie Hai Wong and everyone loved how, oh, what was the actor's name? <laughs> I'll edit it in later. Who cares? <laughs> <laughs> everyone thought that Hai Wong in the movie was so sexy. I thought that's where it came from. I never thought about the word long, which literally means wave, but as a verb, can mean almost in a risque fashion, like go and do sort of what you're not supposed to do or always be going out and having fun. Yeah. And so many lungs makes you a high wong. Yes. Okay. <laughs> so how, how can we use this one? Like what sort of sentence would we use high wong in? We could use this as a noun to describe some some guy. Like, mm. oh, Joshua, oh, so many parties this weekend, you're truly a high wong. <laughs> I think you're making fun of me now. I, I'm in my childhood home at the moment, and I haven't left for weeks. <laughs> so, Tashiga Hai Wang, something like that. Yes. Cool. So that's Hai Wang, and it's funny. I didn't mean to do this to you, but the first two are both about cheating or being a playboy. Shi Jian Guan Li Dashi, a time management expert, is someone who splits their time between different romantic partners, and Hai Wang is someone who uh-huh. has. Not just other fish in the sea has all the fish in the sea and longs all the time. So let's let's move away from that risque oeuvre, if you will, and move on to the next one, which is Gong Juren. I think we briefly mentioned Gong Juren and this construction of something something Ren in our last show. But walk us through this. What does Gong Juren mean? Okay, so I think Gong Juren is a new word. Uh, it's combined to two different Chinese words. It's called Gong Ju and Ren. Gong Ju means tour, and Ren is you know human beings or a person. So it's it's a very new word, and people combine these two words as Gong Ju Ren. So that is you know maybe you you already guessed the meaning of this is is a person who you know use or living like a. Tour. Mm. It means Gong Ju Ren. Yeah. Yeah. So someone who has been turned into a utility or someone who is being used like a tool would be a Gong Ju Ren. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So so mm-hmm. what what context does this work in? Because when I hear Gong Ju Ren, I think about work. I think about the way that some people's jobs can turn them into a sort of a non-human kind of tool. And that relates back to Neijuan that we talked about last time, where Mm. the economy has developed to the point where everyone has to constantly be working all the time. Mm. And that it's hard to have your own sort of inner life or your own personal life that sort of turns you into a Mm -hmm. Um, Is there anywhere outside of work that we can use this? Oh, I think uh, uh, we could use this in a very different uh, situation, like, um, like I, I do, I do podcasts, right? Mm. So if I am a Joe Rogan, I'm not Gong Shu Ren because I mm. am a person who has um, emotion, has a very clear, you know, uh, face, has a very clear face to your audience. Mm-hmm. But if you are just use your voice to say something. A microphone. People do know who you who you are. Hmm. People just listen to your voice, read something. This person we could call it Gong Ren because people don't know who you are. People just, you know, you just use your uh, voice like a tour. Huh. So you are a Gong Ren. So it it could use in every different like um, if you are a like you are a worker in a factory, maybe you could say. He is a Gong Ren because mm. you know he's one of the maybe uh, maybe dozens of hundreds of workers in the factory. You just very small one in this whole factory, so you just as a hammer, <laughs> you just as a tour. <laughs> yeah, and I love the example you gave of Joe Rogan because if I recall, and I don't usually listen to Joe Rogan, but his uh, his. His uh, his opening, his intro, I think has someone else's voice doing the intro. Mm-hmm. So that's a good sort of comparison between Joe Rogan, the guy who gets to be taken as a person uh, with his own personality and his own perspectives, and the person who made the Pientol, which is doesn't have a name and doesn't mm. have a personality. They have been turned into a Gongju. Yes. Which, by the way, that's yeah. fine. I mean, if if anyone wants to pay me to be a gongju ren and make your pian for you or, or something for you, hit yeah. me up. 
I am not opposed to being a gongju in, in, in that particular case. Um, can, can we also use this for relationships? Like we talked about Hai Wang and Shijian Guan Li Da Shi. In English, for romantic relationships, we can talk about people feeling used. Like, oh, he, he used me, or oh, she was just using me. Mm. Uh, and that feels like a similar feel to gongju ren. Does that also work in Chinese, or w- yeah. would that come off as weird to use it in a romantic context? I think we could use this as English English voice in Chinese. Use gongju ren in, uh, you describe this kind of relation. Yeah, you could you could do this. And and I, I, I do, you know, the interesting thing is why this words will appear in recent years. You know, maybe you you already know there is a lot of internet, you know, attack giant in China, mm-hmm. and you know, mm, there is a lot of workers, a lot of employees in those big tech giants, and everyone in, um, in this such big company, more and more people didn't feel himself, mm. didn't feel themselves, and they just feel them as a tour. Mm. So they just you know. Uh, work from you know nine nine six <laughs> from nine a.m. to nine p.m. Work six day, yeah, work six day a week. So they just a tour. They didn't have a spirit. Mm. They didn't have creative. They just work and work and do their job. So they just like a tour in a big system. Mm. So that's why this was where peer recent years and very popular in last year. Yeah, and that's really interesting. I'd never thought about this before. Because there is this big trend uh, towards people's lives being taken over more and more by Jojo Jo Liu, which we talked about months ago on the show. Yeah. And words like Nei Juan and Gong Ju Ren mm-hmm. becoming more popular, especially in 2020. So the, that shows that people mm-hmm. are really feeling the crunch. But at the same time, at the top of the show, you talked about how there are more podcasting apps now that differ from older apps like Himalaya in that they are Mm -hmm. purely for content made by individuals or made to be consumed for fun. Like on Himalaya, a lot of it is um, pay for knowledge. Like I get on Himalaya and I buy a class. It looks like a podcast, but it's an audio class. And that's something that someone who is trying to nejuan or trying to juan very hard might do to stay ahead (laughs) in their career. (laughs) So at the same time that they're feeling that pressure, there's also this development where more sort of freeform and diverse content like podcasts is coming out. I'm not really sure how to connect these two things. Like, is one a reaction against the other, or are they happening independently? Do you have any thoughts about that, or am I just rambling? I, I try to explain this in this way. Um, first of all, you you know the paper knowledge, but we should we should look at. Uh, what what kind of employees? What what kind of person who in workplace uh, are the you know are consumed the paper knowledge? Mm. I think for our, a lot of them is previous in, in maybe in 2015, 2016, maybe three to five years ago, there is a internet industry or the new some some new industry are booming are developing mm. so they want to learn more mm. because they they want to have they want to be become more and more competitive in this you know booming market and they want to have a place for them mm-hmm. but 3 or 5 years later at this point you know the internet is already become a big giant a tech company become a tech giant mm-hmm. So everyone in this whole system becomes more and smaller and smaller. Mm. So at this point, they maybe they realize that okay, knowledge is not it is not everything. It, knowledge is not everything in my life, mm. or work working is not everything in my life. Who am I? Mm. <laughs> maybe they were thinking about this. So where am I in this whole system? Because I I feel I become very smaller as a you know, tour as, as a gongju ren, mm. as a tour. So where I am, so who I am. So at this point, I think podcast may help them because podcast did not provide knowledge. Podcast, I think, actually provide entertainment, but this entertainment is 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 combined with opinion, information, and maybe some knowledge, but actually it is the entertainment. Mm. And at this point, the Chinese podcast, most of Chinese podcast is a talk show. So during this different kind of conversation, they will trigger some thoughts. They will inspire everyone, every listener to think about something. Mm. 
So yeah, I think that's why po- podcasting is more and more popular at this point because they want to fund themselves. Yeah, and I love the way you tied it together because you mentioned how、um, people are possibly turning to these podcasts to get new ideas and to feel like they're not so much of a gongjuren. And in that sense, it's not like these are opposite.、Yeah. Trends happening. It's like one trend is possibly a reaction to the other trend, and we talked about that a little bit、uh, last time when we talked about da gongren, how the identity of da gongren、mm. is、uh, used by some people who are da gonging to create a feeling of community and mutual support to help them feel better about being da gongren and and find ways to be happier as a da gongren. And it seems like. Mm-hmm. Whether it's through the creation of those communities or the creation of communities around podcasts,、uh, it's all about how to feel less like a gongju ren and more like a ren.、Mm. Yes, I think. Anyway, I'm bala 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 ing too much, and we have one more word to get to, and that is ho long. <laughs> ho long literally means. The next wave, or the wave after this、yes. wave. So I'm happy because our word "long"、yes. has come back. It's the same "long" that you would use to describe someone who <laughs> is longing too much, <laughs> going out to the bar, having too much social life. But what does "whole long" mean? Okay, so the literally mean is next wave, and its original come from a a poem、Ooh. in Chinese. It's called a, yeah, it's called Changjiang Hou Lang Tui Qian Lang, which means in the Yangtze River, the next wave it will push the the previous wave. You know, the wave will push the wave, right? <laughs> And the next wave will push the previous wave.、Oh. So that is become yeah. The Hou Lang, this words is come from this poem. It's called Changjiang Hou Lang Tui Qian Lang. So this describe the freshman will push the. Older, <laughs> the older guys, <laughs> <Yeah> . the younger one, the younger persons will push the older persons.、Mm. But why this word is popular in 2020? Because、uh, there's a big video platform called Billy Billy. I、mm. I call it a China's YouTube、mm. because it's it's combined different you know the ordinary people's life, ordinary people's video.、Mm. So、uh, Billy Billy is is very popular in 2020. Because you know, during the pandemic, people just you know quarantine,、oh. and we have a, a lot of time to watch the videos.、Yeah. So、um, Billy Billy become very popular, and、um, in May 2020,、uh, Billy Billy do a very big promotional campaign for the company's 10th anniversary, and one of this campaign there is a advertisement. Uh, broadcasting on CCTV, the China Central Television,、hmm. and before the nationwide news bulletin,、uh, evening bulletin. So there is a, a very famous actor in China called、uh, He Bing, and he gave a, the, the advertisement is He Bing gave a speech,、hmm. and and the speech is、uh, tell all the audience, you know. Hou Lang is coming. <laughs> Next wave is coming, and、uh, it is very positive speech because it is broadcast on CCTV.、Mm. It's not a broadcast just on the on internet. So it's it so it's very positive. But you know, the most users of this platform is younger, so they feel very strange. This why Billy Billy you know <laughs> promote produce a advertisement like that like this.、Mm. But but I, I know this because the the target audience of this. Uh, advertisement is the older people.、Mm. Is the yeah? Is our parents?、Mm. Is the maybe even the government? You know, even the officials, because CCTV is a platform for them. You know,、mm. younger people that don't watch CCTV at、mm. all. But you know, the <laughs> the older 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 like my parents are、uh, still watch CCTV. So this ad this ad is broadcast for、mm. them. But it's become a very hot topics, like you know, Billy Billy used the word "hold on"、uh, and do the compa- campaign, and、uh, they they describe the younger who on this platform a hold on, and they give a、uh, their、uh, description of hold on,、hmm. and they try to ex- introduce the positive younger's images.、Hmm. So it's very interesting, and the hold on this word has become popular in 2020. In、yeah. preparing for this interview, I watched that video. I hadn't seen it before. And it was crazy because I, I I hadn't really 
thought about it as clearly as you just described it. But the video is Hebing talking to uh-huh. the whole long. Talking to the uh, younger generation, and he's saying like, "You, you guys, yes. you guys, you guys are. This is, this is your time. You are having all these great new ideas. Yes. You will change the world. Yes. You're so lucky to live in this modern world, but the modern world is so lucky to have you. Hold <laughs> on. The message is framed in such a way that the kids watching this, I'm assuming, and I'm glad that you said that because I was assuming this as well. The kids watching it would be like." Hubbing, what are you talking? No one asked you. <laughs> We're fine. <laughs> yeah. But I hadn't put it together. You're right. It's not for the kids. It's for the old people who are watching CCTV, which is China Central TV, which is where they, they still have the uh, the daily news broadcast. It's like the official mm. TV station. Yes. So maybe I think maybe most of your listeners in the U.S. don't know why we should do this. But, but actually in China, I think... Some new platform, Bilibili is a is a developing platform, and it is a very big video platform now. Um, I think the government have a little worry about them because hmm. the government, you know, full of the elder people, and they don't know younger people's thinking. Yeah, the the Qianlong doesn't know anything about the whole long. Yes, you are a such big platform and full of the younger people. What are you doing? Mm-hmm. So what 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 are, what are you sharing on this platform every day? Mm-hmm. So this this advertisement is for them to let them know, okay, they are fine, and they are positive, mm-hmm. <laughs> and they are you know that have a healthy mind. Yeah. <laughs> so I think it's very maybe I yeah your listeners in overseas will feel very strange, but I, that is some background I I, I want to introduce with you because. You know, it's it's we call the Chinese characteristics. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's a new generation with Chinese characteristics. So, can, can we say that Billy Billy is YouTube with Chinese characteristics? I think Billy Billy wants to become. Maybe they want to become Chinese Disney, <laughs> become because uh, they have very strong resources on cartoon and the comics. Hmm. So I think that is their ambitions because YouTube. YouTube in China very risky mm. because you know people everyone could share a video in in China is a little bit risky and yeah. they must yeah so so I I don't think that is their ambitions I think Billy Billy's ambitions become China's Disney <laughs> <laughs> huh I never thought about that in that case I'm really looking forward to seeing yeah. <laughs> where they go uh, so that's Ho Long yeah and last question about Ho Long. Mm-hmm. I, I, are are we Qianlong or Holong? Like you and I, we're we're similar ages. We're not exactly the same age, but which one are we? Like I'm in my mid thirties. I've never actually asked you how old you are. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I I I think it 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 depends on uh, who we are facing. <laughs> if if we yeah. If we're facing the Zhou Ling Ho, even the the people the the people who. Born in 1990s or even Ling Ling Ho, mm. people who born in 2000s, we are Qian Long. Mm. <laughs> because I, I don't know much about their thoughts. Right. Yeah, they love something called ACG. They love <laughs> uh, the digital games. Mm. But I don't know. I, I didn't play digital games. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. So, I don't know what they're talking, what they're loving. Yeah. So, we are Qian Long. But... If we're facing my parents, I still hold on. <laughs> yeah. And ACG, you just mentioned, this can be today's bonus word. I recently learned this acronym. It's it's um, uh, anime, comics, and games. It's basically the anime style, yeah. uh, which had yeah. previously been referred to as kind of like uh, arts, arts yeah, yeah. Then, because manga are two-dimensional. And so that sort of comic art style became arts, literally two-dimension. Mm. And now it's called ACG as an English English acronym that's only used in Chinese contexts, which is fascinating. But that's that's for another day. Oh, really? Yeah. I I never I never heard of before. I, ACG is only used in Chinese for the most part, from what I can tell. Wikipedia wow. informed me that it's mostly used in uh, in Chinese contexts. Mm. Wow, it's cool. <laughs> so here is the, the, the Qianlong. Yeah. Here we are getting educated by the Holong. Who knew? <laughs> All right. So those are those are our four words for the day. Uh, and now at the very end, let's mm-hmm. take just a minute or so uh, to review. I'm going to put you to the test, Yang Yi, and see how much you can remember. For example, 
if someone longs too much, goes out too much, has uh, too much social life, and maybe too many romantic partners, what can you call them? We could call them Hai Wang. Hai Wang. Right? Aquaman or King of the Sea and all the fish therein and all the waves. Contrasted to that, if someone has so many romantic partners that they have to really be careful how they manage their time, what are they? Oh, we could call them 时间管理大师. Yeah. Now, in English, we say we have generations, the older generation, the younger generation. Uh, but in Chinese, what would you call the younger generation and then the older generation? We could call younger generation 后浪, and we could call older generation 前浪. Nice. Your, your Chinese is so good. You're getting all of these. Let's see if you get the last one. If someone, for whatever reason, is being used as a tool, either by their job or by society or by the people around them, what can you call that person? We could call them 工具人. 工具人? Yes. Well, <laughs> Thank you very much for coming to talk about these four words that really blew up in, in 2020. And before we get out of here, there's something I forgot to talk about at the top. Mm -hmm. If people are interested in you uh, or interested in your work, how should they find you online? Where should they go? Oh, uh, I have a website called JustPodNews.com or JustPodMedia.com. Both websites are available. And it's um, um, a just just part media and it's more about our company uh just part is a chinese podcasting company so that is our official website and just part news is Yixia, the project mm. of Boke uh i wrote a lot of articles about chinese podcasting industry and introduced the international podcasting into chinese market uh, we have English version, Ooh. so you could find that English version website on jazzpodnews.com. And that's all one word, no spaces or anything, just J-U-S-T-P-O-D-N-E-W-S.com. Yes. All right. Well, thank you again, Yang Yi, for coming. We had a great time. Thank you, Joshua. Thank you for having me. And Happy New Year. Happy New Year. Happy New Year. Yeah, Happy New Year. <laughs> That's all the MSG we have for you today. If you want more, or if you want flashcards, or if you just want to chat about some of these words, find us on Twitter as MSG Mandarin, or on WeChat as MSG Podcast. Thanks again to Yang Yi for talking with us, and a very special thank you this week goes out to the Ho Long. Ho Long, I believe in you. You can do it. And by it, I mean get patronized by Qianlong like me. And last but not least, thank you to you, the listener, for listening. I love it when you listen to this podcast. This might be our last episode in the Year of the Rat, but we'll see you again in the Year of the Ox. So for now, 再见, 再会, 再聊. Bye-bye.